Ponyville, the sun started to peek over the distant purple mountains, casting its bright, warm rays upon a small town nestled in the center of Equestria. As each ray streamed through the windows of the houses in the town, every pony woke up, entangled themselves from their blankets, yawned, stretched, and then hopped out of bed, ready to start a whole new, fresh day. A pony opened her door and waved to her neighbor across the street. Shutters opened, doormats were placed, signs in the store set open. It looked like it would be another bright, normal day in the small no town known as Ponyville, where barely anything out of the ordinary happened. Um, Twilight? Spike said, looking out a window. Are there supposed to be stars out in the middle of the day? Don't be ridiculous, Spike, Twilight said, smiling and raising an eyebrow. It's scientifically impossible for stars to be... The moment Twilight stepped outdoors, her, do her jaw dropped. Ponies galloped back and forth, squeam screaming and panicking. Shutters were tightly shut, store signs said closed, and doormats were dragged quickly into the houses with the doors slamming behind them. But that was nothing compared to what was happening to the sky. As all of Ponyville was in panic, the sky overhead was dark, filled with stars, but no moon, which was particularly unusual. What is going on? Twilight muttered, trotting back inside and looking at her clock. It says that it's ten o'clock in the morning, but then where's the sun? And where on Equestria is the moon? Maybe something happened to the princesses, Spike exclaimed. I mean, unless something happened to them, then the sun should be up. Spike, send a letter, Twilight said. If something is actually wrong, then they won't reply. Ask them what is going on. I'm on it, Spike said, grabbing a quill and piece of paper. Twilight paced back and forth for a few minutes when there was a sudden knock on the door. She opened it to see a young blue stallion standing there. Um, excuse me, the stallion said. I'm new here, and I was wondering what was going on here, and some pony said to ask Twilight's Princess Twilight about it. Oh, Twilight said. Well, I'm Twilight Sparkle. What is your name? You can call me Starfire, the stallion said. Starfire, Twilight said. Right, well, my assistant is writing a letter to Princess Celestia and Princess Luna to see if they know what's going on, because I honestly have no idea. Oh, okay. I just wasn't sure whether this was normal here. Trust me, it's not. Spike! Twilight yelled over her shoulder. Did the princesses write back yet? No, they didn't, Spike said with roar worry. Maybe something did happen to them? Great, Twilight groaned. Turning back to Starfire, she said, I'm sorry, but I I'm busy. Got it, Starfire said. I hope everything turns out okay. Me too. Twilight turned and slammed her door behind her, yelling to Spike, something about letters and being sick of adventures. Shrugging, Starfire walked away. Starfire had traveled all the way from Baltimore to Ponyville, hoping to find a new life there. He was quite young, around 18 when he left. He had a troubling life ever since he got his cutie mark, which probably wasn't how it was supposed to be for most ponies. The reason was he didn't understand what it meant. His cutie mark was a white star alight with blue fire. Sure, it was related to his name, but he wasn't satisfied with just that. He wasn't sure what talent or ability or personality trait his cutie mark reflected, but he wanted to find out. He couldn't even remember how he got his cutie mark in the first place. For some reason, that memory was blurry. But ever since he turned 18, he decided he was old enough to go out on his own. When Starfire had first arrived at Ponyville four days ago, he felt truly at home there. The ponies were friendly, the town was active and provided lots of things to do, and he was even considering buying a house and settling there, maybe. For some reason, he just felt like he was called to the simple town. Unexpectedly, however, when the sun rose and was at, at, at its peak in the sky, the sky suddenly turned dark and stars appeared as if it was nighttime. There was no moon, though, and the moment the sky turned dark, it was almost as if the sun was covered or snuffed out. Is it always this exciting here? Starfire asked the young brown mare nearby. Sometimes, the mare replied, shrugging. Weird things are always happening to this place. Sure seems like it, Starfire said. The mare smiled at him and then quickly trotted away. Why did Ponyville choose to be in trouble now? A dark gray mare complained, glaring up at the night sky. I have painting to get to, and I certainly can't do it well without sunlight. 
No, Zarakis is disturbing my concentration, too. The mayor's name was Cerise. Cerise was Ponyville's finest painter, and she made Pony sure of it, too. She wasn't only talented, but she was pretty, too. All the way from Prance. Honestly, I've had enough of this. I should have gone to Kentalot instead of this crazy place. As she was complaining, she caught sight of Starfire. You there! She called to him, galloping towards him. Me? Starfire looked confused. Yes, you! Cerise said, reaching him. Do you have the time? Uh, ten in the morning? Sacre bleu! Cerise exclaimed. Then why is it dark at? I don't know, Starfire replied. Princess Twilight doesn't know either. She said she'd contact the princesses, but apparently they aren't replying. This is a devastation! I can't paint in the dark. It's not as if I have night vision. Oh, whatever shall I do? Why don't you just use a lamp? Painting is a very delicate process. It requires a certain amount of light in order for it to be perfect. No, 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 no. Lamp light just won't do. Cerise looked closer at Starfire. I don't think I've seen you before. You are all new here? Yes. Uh, yeah, I am, Starfire said. Well then, I am Celis. What is your name? Starfire. A pleasure to meet you, Starfire. Where are you from? I'm from Baltimore. I decided to come here to find a place to settle out down in, I guess. Interesting, Ceres said, frowning as if in deep thought. Wait. Why did you ask me the time? Don't you have a clock or something? No, my clock is broken. No idea how it happens, but now it doesn't work. All it does is make clunking sounds and the hand sometimes moves backwards. Did you say you were an artist? Starfire tilted his head. Yes, I am. Now, if you don't mind, I have complaints to file. Bonjour. And with that, she trotted briskly away. After two hours, Mayor Mayor called in a meeting in the town center. You've all been called here in the event of emergency. The mayor spoke from her soapbox. Pony started to murmur. Starfire watched from the back of the crowd. Starfire! He heard a voice exclaim beside him. He turned to see Cerise standing and looking at him. Hey, Cerise, he said to her, turning back to the mayor. I just came. What is going on here? The French mayor asked. I think they called a meeting about the sky. Oh, I do oh, everything turns out all right. Meanwhile, the crowd was growing restless. There is no need to panic, the mayor continued quickly. Princess Twilight is still trying to contact the princesses. And while we're waiting, it is our, in our best interest to... Does Princess Twilight know what's going on with the sky? A pony shouted, interrupting. Yeah, another pony shouted. The cards... Car crowd started yelling and asking questions. Quiet down, please, Mayor Mayor said, looking desperate. Princess Twilight is doing the best she can. Somebody has to be behind this, the stallion shouted. The pony's murmuring grew louder. Do you think maybe it's somebody here that could be the cause of all this? A mayor exclaimed. That set the whole crowd off. What if the pony behind this is among us? What if Nightmare Moon is back? Somebody here must have something to do with this calamity. The horror! The horror! Please, calm down, Mayor Mayor said. We mustn't jump to conclusions here. I saw a new pony come here a few days ago, a mayor suddenly said. The ponies around here grew, her grew quiet. Maybe he has something to do it? She's right, a stallion nearby said. I even saw him. Well, I'll bet he's the one behind it all. Because I'd never seen him before, and when he came... It seems like all this happened the moment he came. Let's not jump to conclusions here, folks, Mary Mayor said helplessly. But the crowd was too riled to li up to listen to her. Are they talking about you? Cerise asked Starfire. He gulped and said, I sure hope not. Just then the crowd suddenly parted, and every single pony looked in Starfire and Cerise's direction. Everything was dead silent. Starfire gulped again. Um, hello! <laughs> uh, he laughed nervously. Uh, y you're not, you're not blaming me for all this, are you? Silence.
Well, uh, uh, gotta go. See ya. Starfire said, backing slowly away. It has to be him! A pony yelled, Get him! Oh, come on, I just got here! Ah! Starfire turned and ran for his life with a crowd of ponies chasing after him. The ponies chased him all over Ponyville, around houses, through trees, through houses, over bridge, bridges, under bridges, until Starfire was suddenly yanked into an alleyway. The crowd of ponies passed by, still thinking they were chasing him. After taking a moment to catch his breath, he turned to say thank you to whoever helped him. It was Cerise. Cerise? he exclaimed. I thought you were part of that stampede. No, Cerise said, peering around the corner to make sure the ponies weren't coming their way. But why did you help me? Cerise turned to him, her face soft for the first time since he met her. Because I don't think you are behind this. Starfire looked stunned for a moment, that Cerise's expression hardened with annoyance again. I mean, look at you. To say honestly think a sob like you could make the day nighttime, please. Thanks for your help, Starfire said sarcastically. Just be glad that I've saved your flank. Those ponies probably would have flattened you or bound you at the stake if it weren't for me. Well, thank you. As some ponies say, no problem. Now, you should leave. Wait, what? Leave? Leave. But why? I thought you were on my side. I am not taking sides, Suri said. But you won't be safe staying here for long. I just helped you avoid getting stampeded by a crazy mob. But that doesn't mean I am here to help you stay and get found eventually. It is best to leave until all of this blows over. She looked regretful for a moment. I am sorry. It is not in our best interest to, to treat cost newcomers like this, but usually the sky doesn't have stars in the middle of the day. Now please, go. Starfire went silent for a minute, thinking about Cerise's words. Finally, he nodded sadly. Okay, I'll, I'll leave. Thank you for your kindness, Cerise. Cerise snorted. <laughs> Don't thank me yet, she said. Thank me once you actually get out alive. Starfire chuckled. Peering around the corner and making sure the coast was clear, he waved to Cerise one last time and then galloped away. Cerise watched him go. Who knows, she said, shrugging to herself. Maybe he will find out how to fix this. As Starfire reached the top of the hill outside Ponyville, he stopped to rest. Sitting down, he suddenly noticed something odd. He felt warm, and it was bright where he was sitting. He looked up and regretted it, for the bright rays of the sun hit him straight in the eyes. He shielded his face and looked up at the blue sunlit sky. Wait a second. He turned back to look at Ponyville and his eyes widened. The entire sky directly above Ponyville was dark and filled with stars as if it was nighttime. But the rest of the sky outside of Ponyville was bright and sunny like the day. The only nighttime sky he could see was the sky covering Ponyville. Something's not right, Starfire said to himself. I have to find out what's going on. If I don't, who will? To be continued.